it's Tommy Allen from TommyAllenMusic.com. Today I had the pleasure to speak to the one and only Mr. Eddie Martin, one of UK's finest blues musicians on the circuit today. Come and check it out. So, how are you doing, Eddie? I'm doing fine, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'd like to have you with me today. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, you were born in Watford, London. Um, you were brought up around folk and rock and your first guitar around 15 and then you got into the sort of blues guitar around 16, 17 with your first hero, Freddie King and the Burglar album. So my question mm. for you was, what age did you first start getting into the harmonica and who was your first sort of wow artist that led you down that path? Yeah. Well, because I was into sort of folk and singer-songwriter stuff, as well as rock at the same time, really, from around the age of 15 and 16, um, Bob Dylan was a big influence. And I, because I, you know, you, you get interested and, and sort of fanatical about people when you're young, younger. And um, with Bob Dylan, I sort of researched where he came from and, and started to listen to Woody Guthrie. And of course, Woody Guthrie played... Um, had um, Sonny Terry on a lot of his recordings. So that was, Sonny Terry was the first harmonica player really, just from that sort of singer-songwriter stuff I was into. Um, and then I just looked at um, uh, more about um, Sonny Terry, because he was amazing, you know, he's, he's fantastic on all, all those Woody Guthrie recordings as well. Um, and so I got into Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee and after looking at Freddie King, I mean, you, you sort of always go backwards, don't you? You go backwards through the history of the people that you love and, and, and start to study them. And so from looking at Freddie King and, and at the same time looking at Brandy McGee and, and uh, Sonny Terry, I went, you know, I just carried on going. All the, since the age of 16, I've, I've just carried on sort of researching more and more about the, the story as it goes back from those guys, really. Right, Okay. And that, what age was that? The same sort of age, sixteen, seventeen? Or? Yeah, it just been, you know, up till now. Yeah. Right, sixteen to now. Because you, yeah, because the stuff I found on you is mostly mentioned in the blues guitar. It didn't mention much about the harp in the early days. So was it both? Uh -oh. the, was it both the yeah. same thing, or? Well, um, I, I started playing the harmonica on the rack quite, quite early, um, and um, it was it was probably around sixteen, seventeen. Um, and then, then I moved to Bristol, and when I moved to Bristol, I was trying to find um, uh, a good band, a good harmonica player to to, to play with, you know, doing, doing blues stuff, and I couldn't find anyone really, um, and so I started doing more and more of the the, the harmonica on, on a rack, and um, uh, started working out arrangements for bands, and but in the end, I decided I'd just carry on doing it myself on the rack, so you know, the rack playing sort of just took off really. Right, okay. And who was the ba blues band in Bristol that day? Well, there, there was no blues bands with any sort of traditional um, bent at all. Um, the, the, the big blues band was the Parole Brothers, Steve Payne. Okay. Uh, but it was kind of like a, a Rikudery, sort of J.J. Kale sort of approach to blues. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't find anyone that, that was playing the, the sort of blues that I wanted to listen to, really. And then from there... Uh, you also said you were motivated as a young man by social and political changes and followed politics. Um, what sparked this motivation? Well, uh, from from my first, I suppose I always had a sort of sympathy for the underdog, you know, right. growing up. And um, mum and dad weren't particularly political, but my dad was a in the trade union, and um, um, you know, we we came from sort of. Uh, East End sort of working class stock, you know, yeah. back in Bermondsey. And, you know, all the family had, had, had it really hard, you know. And uh, so I knew, I knew from from family history what it was like to be on the receiving end of, um, you know, a lot of grief um, and, and poverty and, and, you know, ill health and so on. And um, when I went to, uh, I had a job, first first job I had was on the railway, actually working on, on, the, on the railway. And it was all a ruse, really, because my my mates in my band, my first my first blues band, um, we all wanted to get a job so that we could um, earn money to buy the gear for the for the band. And once I got involved in, on the railway, um, you know, I got involved in the trade union because things was were so terrible. You know, working conditions were terrible. The way we were treated was terrible. Um, and after that, I I ended up um, studying politics and sociology and, and going and going off to college. You know, I carried on playing the whole time and, and became quite, um, you know, politically motivated, really. And you still do that, or...? Well, you know, I'm still 
still engaged in politics and still, you know, it doesn't go away really. You, you know, you you just you just want a better world and and you a better world for for most people and uh, and you don't see it happening. And so, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I I just don't I don't see myself as an individual. I see myself as as part of a part of the a cause for a future, a better future for everybody, really. The new album, first released, two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Um, what led to the title? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of a title for ages, and um, somebody, a lot of the, a lot of the lyrics are. Um, it's kind of a an album which is uh, looking at nature. I mean, it, you, you get older and you get more and more drawn to nature, and and the. Um, uh, I've always been sort of. Um, Sort of close to um, uh, nature, and, and uh, but you know, as I've got older, it's got more and more uh, important. And so I've written, written a lot of lyrics on the album, which are uh, making comparisons with um, nat- natural things. You know, um, there's a lot of songs about water. You know, there's a love is like a water. Is one of the songs, and um, a, a joke emerged during the course of the recording that I I. Um, I must have been very thirsty when I was writing the album because there were so many songs about water. <laughs> so that was one of the one of the things. But thirst is really about just like the the um, eternal thirst that I've got for songwriting. Really, I just I'm just writing songs all the time, and it's just that that creative urge inside you really, and it, it's quite uh, well described in, in terms of talking about it as a thirst. The reviews seem really good that I've read so far on the album. Is it going well? For you? Yeah, I mean it's brilliant, really. I've all I've, I've had three reviews in, in this week, you know, from all over the world. It's it's all going really well. The the reviews are great, you know. The reviews are, are really good, and it's it's great when you get a review from somebody who's actually taken the time out to think intelligently about what they're listening to and and to to, to uh, do a bit of research and. Um, and know what you were trying to get and get at, and also to read the lyrics. You know, I mean, I really put a lot of time into both the lyrics and the and the music. And uh, you know, it's nice when uh, that's also uh, done by the listener. It's on Apple, iTunes, and Amazon, um, and obviously you can purchase it through your website www.eddymartin.com. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, who have you seen live? Who's given you goosebumps? Uh-huh. Uh, there's quite a few, really. Did you ever see Sonny Terry or anyone like that? <laughs> I did see Sonny Terry as Brandon McGee. Yeah, I, um, I think um, seeing Buddy Guy live was amazing. I, I did a festival with, with him in, in Norway. It was the Hell Festival. And it was the first time I got to see him and his band. And it's just incredible, you know. It's just... Um, um, they were all absolute master musicians and and the arrangements were amazing the way that he he connected with the audience and and led the audience on a journey was amazing his guitar playing was was great his singing was great and uh that was probably the biggest goosebumps experience i've had um ones of uh yeah blues music so with your songwriting what's your method at the moment yeah, there isn't really a single method. It comes from all those different directions. You know, it depends where the inspiration comes from. So, you know, I mean, I've... Do you I've, plan um, it, though? Do you, do you sit down with the guitar and no, say, right, I'm going to write, or...? Um, sometimes I do. Yeah, sometimes I do. Um, and, um, I mean, I'm, I'm never sure of, of things to write about. And, you know, I've, I've, you know, I write poetry as well, and... I've got a huge stock of, of um, things I've written poems and poems about and lyrics about, which I draw on when I come to record an album. And uh, sometimes, if it's a poem, then I adapt it a little bit. Quite a few of the the lyrics on Thirst album started off as poems, and I adapted them to, so they're a bit more um, suitable for for lyrics. And um, sometimes, in fact, more than usual on the last album, I started with lyrics and 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 built the song around the the, the words. Um, and but it can equally go the other way, you know. You start with um, some ideas, um, playing around on guitar, get some chord sequence, getting a melody in your head. Um, it can go either way, really. What other hobbies do you have? Um, well, you know, I've got my my son who's fourteen, and um, I'm really interested in in his uh, education. I sort of take a big part of it. He's he's a really talented. Um, he's actually really into classical music. Okay. He's uh, 
He's, he likes his blues and his jazz, but in terms of playing and listening, he, he's really into classical and he's, he's a really good cellist. So I'm really interested in, in helping him along. I go to all his lessons and, you know, that's, that's, that's great. Um, we play together as well. Um, I do some more singer-songwriter songs as well, which are not strictly blues at all, really, or even from necessarily from a blues tradition. And um, he, uh, it's lovely playing with, a, with cello and acoustic guitar and, and um, voice. You know, it's a lovely uh, arrangement. So that's nice, but my wife and I, my wife's an artist, and I, you know, I, I share an interest with her in, in art. You know, we, we go off and see galleries and, and, and exhibitions. Um, we're interested in film, love, you know, love watching film. Um, so recently been watching, uh, well, we've been watching anything by the Coen brothers and... and um, that's going to be one of my questions, what are you, watch, what are you watching at the moment? <laughs> Tarantino, just watch Tarantino's new film, Hollywood. Fantastic. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, recommend it. Actually, I just watched Cadillac Records the other day. You know the the, the so-called yeah, story yeah. of. Did you like it? Yeah. Well, yeah, of course it's great. I mean, there's some really good versions of some of the classics on there. The, the band and the musicians did well, but of course they took terrible liberties with the story. And um, uh, but you know it's a great it's a great thing to watch if you're a blues fan. Um, oh yeah. We we saw uh, um, Black Snake Moan. Yeah. Really strange film. It was good actually. Yeah, Samuel uh, Jackson. Yeah, with all that North Mississippi Hills stuff, and uh, which I love, of course. And uh, I, I played with Cedric Burnside last time he came over, and um, uh, that was quite a, quite a cool film. I thought interesting, but a bit bit zany. What books are you reading at the moment? Yeah, I'm in a in a book club, and I love reading. And I've just uh, I read a lot actually, um, but I've just read. Um, I do like you know it, it's not all American literature, but I do love American literature, but. Um, Paul Beatty, um, The Sellout, fantastic uh, book about uh, uh, about modern America and the experience of black people there, and brilliant, br brilliant guy. Um, um, but I've just finished uh, Bruce Chatwin's In Patagonia. Bruce Chatwin is a guy from a totally different background, you know, sort of a posh kid, uh, ex public school boy, but um, he went off on a on a sort of, sort of a, a a posh hippie trail, really. He's, he's in a nomadism, and he wrote this. One of his first books was was in Patagonia, which is fantastic, absolutely fantastic read. Um, you know, the guy's an absolute genius, and uh, so uh, that's that was a fascinating read. Okay, and what be your desert island disc take with you? <laughs> it's very funny you should say that. I was I was thinking about this the other day. You know, one of the playlists I've got. Is, is a very, I mean, my tastes are really eclectic, really, although it does tend to be sort of black music centered, really. Um, and, you know, so I like African music, sort of jazz, soul, um, as well as blues. And uh, um, I was playing one of my, my playlists the other day, and um, this the track came up with Betty Carter and, and uh, Ray Charles, Baby It's Cold Outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just love that track. I just love everything about that track. It's got the coolest arrangement, of course. It's, it's just the most amazing, spontaneous, fun, flirty, sort of playful, but really soulful and clever delivery by by Ray Charles and Betty Carter, you know. Yeah. yeah. Baby's cold as I gotta go home. <laughs> Baby, stay right here. Oh, it's so fantastic. I, I, would, I would forever love to hear that on a desert island. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you ever see that footage of him with Stevie Wonder doing um, Living in the City? No. That's, that's really cool. Um, they both take verses, but they have two pianos pointing each other. And right. Obviously, they're both blind, and they're both singing off each other, and that's that's on YouTube, if you check it out. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll check it out, yeah. So with the acoustic stuff, are you going to be doing another one-man album? Yeah, of course. Uh, the lockdown is... is um, caused me to pick up um, my home studio and to, <laughs> uh, so I'm doing a, I'm going, working through a course on on how to use it properly but I have um, got quite a few songs already done very roughly on my home studio of, of acoustic stuff um, and yeah I, I, I will be working on that I'll be I'll be more more likely than not what are you running out an acoustic album next year probably what are you running at home studio wise Logic Pro X. Logic, okay. Yeah, because I've got some really, really nice mics, and um, um, I've got 
I've got some. I've got quite a collection of guitars. I'm, just, I'm sure you have, Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's like you say, it's just learned to use the interface for me. I found um, Pure Mix helpful. I don't right. know if you heard of them. It's a thing you pay monthly, um, and they do really good tutorials by actual sound engineers, and that, oh, okay. that's that's really good. And but they have got Logic stuff on there. Some of it's Pro Tools, you All know, right. for setting gain levels, uh, limiting, doing everything like that. Everything, you know, really easy to understand. Right, that's um, useful. Yeah, so I might, I might touch you up for that contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is cool. It's like Pure Mix. Pure Mix is the one I went with. Yeah, American. Um, but they went into a thing like a phase, teach you uh, how to listen to music, like actually listen to the low end, high end, and how to use a compressor properly, everything, how to set up tracks. That's good. That's all that real stuff that you want. And, uh, you know, because most of the sort of logic tutorials, I mean, the one I'm doing, I'm working through at the moment, in the, in the first lesson, he said, here, I can show you how to make a, make a song in 120 seconds. And he did it. <laughs> He's using all these Apple loops. And it's just anti-music, you know. I don't want to learn how to use soft, you know, uh, MIDI, stuff, you know, this, that, and the other, and loops and quantizing loops. You know, it's, it's got to be no. about playing real music, yeah. you know. Well, Pure Mix, there's one on there. Well, there's a few on there for singer-songwriters, how to set a mic up and record acoustic guitar. Mm. Um, yeah. And then they've got the guy going from start to finish with a song, which is like two hours long, with um, Cosby, Steele, and Nash. Where they, oh, go, right. where they go through recording it, how they mix it, set the levels, and then to the final master. Cool. But it's like yeah. two, three hours long. But it's it's they are good. Um, Interesting. Recommend it if you've got the time. Like well, you've got the time now. So I want to say you was one of my main influences for the the blues duo I do. So you know I loved the um, the stuff you did. The early um, I think it looked like it was uh, like a London sort of thing oh my god that's my first album was it yeah solo in soho yeah 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 yeah, yeah that was like my, one of my influences i used to listen to loads for um and that's where i got the one of the ideas for doing the one man band but obviously i didn't play harmonica so got harmonica player in so thank you yeah. for that <laughs> uh, that's, you're very welcome and uh, john vaughan is uh is a good lad yeah he's a yeah. he's a and a yuki as well i know she's she's done some yeah. bits of you now that's right yeah yeah they're great players i love them both yeah uh, um but no i first met you when i was i don't know would have been about 15 um at the basin state blues club right and i yeah, used to yeah. i used to roadie right. and lift all the gear in to meet the bands and get to be around it and you yeah smacks to... everett and all yeah, that yeah you used to come and play and uh you used to come and sort of right. help help lift your amp and but, yeah, yeah. But I kept it away a bit, so and that was such a while ago. No, and the last time I think I saw you was I'd done a jam with you with your um at, in Bristol that regular Sunday night or Sunday years ago. Yeah, yeah. Is, that, is yeah. that still going? Yeah, well, it was until a lot until recently. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, it's the, it's probably the longest running uh, blues residency in in Britain. I think it's been going twenty six years now. Blimey. And, you, and you've done it that whole time, have you? Yeah, yeah. I started it up. Yeah, it was originally just a, just a jazz gig, a jazz pub, and I suggested um, a blues night, and um, it, you know it just took off in nine, that was about nineteen ninety four, nineteen ninety five, something like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's a great place for people to come and see you, you know, on the regular. Oh, Sunday still. That's right. Yeah. I mix it up a bit. I do. I do all my different acts. You know, I've got the blues rock thing, the blues rock trio. Uh, that's the Thirst album and, and, and others, you know. Um, and then I've got my uh, Eddie Martin and the 58s, which is traditional uh, uh, band blues, you know, yeah. stuff, T-Bone Walker, and Will James, and those sort of sounds, uh, and all my, 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 my favourites. Um, my favourite sounds in, in uh, small group um, uh, recording, blues recordings, uh, sort of a big influence there. And then uh, I do my blues rock thing as well, where I, you know, branch out and do the 60s and 70s blues rock influenced stuff. Mm. Uh, and the harmonica workshops is another thing you're doing, aren't you, on the side? Yeah, I do workshops um, on guitar and harmonica, you know, different places at different times. Yeah. You, so do you been... teach over Skype for people out there that might want to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, of course, I'm trying to get as much 
new online work as possible at the moment to, to to cope with all the you know the, the loss of income with the, with the gigs going out the window. So, so what's the best yeah, way of contacting you for that? Um, just Eddie at eddiemartin.com. Right. Okay. Or, or Facebook me. You know, um, Blues Eddie is my tag on Facebook and and on Instagram. Right. Um, so yeah, contact contact me there or PM me on Facebook or just email Eddie at eddiemartin.com. Um, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. And what? And I guess you have a structure for beginners and stuff for the harmonica. Yeah, I've written some some guides. You know, I've got a beginner's guide and I've got an intermediate advanced guide, so we can work through that. But I tailor all the lessons to what individual students want. You know, and make sure that um, I find out what, what level they're at and and then take them forward as, um, as a sort of dialogue, really. Right. Same with the guitar and the harmonica as well. You know, um, I'm also doing. I've got a few students, uh, a few song singer songwriters who who just want a little bit of coaching and critiquing of their songs. You know. Um, and then that's that's all online. I can do that all um, online. It works quite well. Oh, okay. Um, the Blue Blood record you started up was that mainly for your your own original stuff? Yeah, that's right. I mean, to start with, I had a couple of other. I mean, originally I was working with New Gene Records and as a distributor f through my label for um, for them. You know, so Matt Schofield and uh, uh, Ian Siegel, their earlier stuff was. Put out through my label, uh, through the distributors that I had on my label. Right. But I just, after a while, I just concentrated on what I was doing, and um, Eugene got their own thing together. I also had a great singer called Mighty Sam McLean, uh, who I distributed um, um, uh, his a couple of his records. You know, he's 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 passed on now, but um, so yeah, I mean. Uh, Really, I, con I I let that go because I just wanted to concentrate on my own music. Really, I didn't want to become a, a record company, you know, mogul. <laughs> no. I just did it the way to um, um, to help people out, but also to get my own music out there mainly. Yeah. Thank you for your time, and you know, no problem, good okay. to see you, mate. No, it's good to see you too. Um, I just do a last quick. I I done it the other day. A quick seven. Don't think about it. Sort of answers. See what comes out. So, walk or drive. Walk. Lonnie Johnson or Blind Blake? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, can't I have both of them? No. <laughs> Blind Blake. Blind Blake. Yeah. Sink or swim? Swim, I love swimming. Harp or guitar? <laughs> oh, no, you can't do that one. You're cutting me down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite? You must have a little bit for... Oh, no, I, I can't say that. Well, guitar for songwriting. It's, yeah. Okay, we'll go with that. Lecture or acoustic? No, you can't do that to me either. You can't speak down the middle like this, man. It's just, just cruel. Oh, God, I can't do it. I can't do it. See, mine would be acoustic, even though I play electric. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, say for songwriting, and like now, at home or on a desert island, acoustic. I, I'd, I'd go with that too. Because, you know, half the time you can, you can, you can play, um, you know, what you'd like to play on the, on the electric, on the acoustic, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and last one, black or white. It's got to be black music for me. I, I, I just can't, you know, I can't change on that one, really. <laughs> uh, great job, Eddie. Well, thank you. It's real nice speaking with you and, you know, spending the time with you. And cool. hopefully I'll see you again real soon. You too, Tommy. Thumbs up, Yeah, keep, keep it on, man. I'm really enjoying your stuff your stuff with uh, with John as well. I've been hearing you play some of that. Your voice is great, man. I love your voice. And, uh, yeah, you've got to get that one-man band thing down really, really nice now. So, well done. Yeah. Thanks, very kind. <laughs> we'll talk soon. Cheers, mate. Take care, Tom. Take All care, best, man. Mate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Tommy Allen from TommyAllenMusic.com, and that was Eddie Martin speaking with me. If you'd like to find out more about him and his music, go to www.eddiemartin.com. Next week's guest is the lovely Rebecca Downs, a Birmingham bass guitarist, singer, songwriter, so come and check that out. Stay safe, and a word from our director, Coco. Coco. What's that mold doing in here? Ah. Goodbye.